Hello and welcome to your next tutorial of Roll20 with me, Dalric. So what we're going to go over today is um, putting creatures onto a battle map and making sure that they're ready for combat, having uh, what you need right there available for you as the DM for while you're actually doing combat. Uh, this is actually going to be give you a little bit of insight of what you're going to be able to do with PCs in the future. But never mind that. Right now we're worrying about setting up the bad guys. So um, without further ado, I suppose we can jump right into it. So one of the things that you're going to always notice whenever you roll, log into Roll20 is it's going to bring you to your home screen. It's going to show recent games and maybe a few other things. So we have our games lessons. We're going to press join game. Always expect that about 15 second loading screen if you're going to be a, uh, a free account. Uh, there was no loading screen for me because I literally just logged out a moment ago and put it in right here. So that being said, we uh, have our basic map like we've had a bunch of times beforehand. I'm going to pull this map back a bit so you can see it. Yay. And we have our toolbar. Where are we going to have our combat take place? Well, <clears throat> why don't we do the Simple Planes battle map that we just made very recently? So clicking on that, jumping into the Simple Planes map, you can see it's set up just as we had it beforehand uh, with that weird fire elemental popping up in the middle. Why is there fire elemental there? I don't know. What, whatever the case may be. Let's set up this combat for our PCs. Let's assume it's a group of uh, level 6 PCs that are kind of jumping in here. They're trying to thwart the plans of this evil orcish band or, or tribe or whatever the case may be uh, from, from summoning this uh, greater fire elemental from burning down the nearby village. Great plot. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, first of all, let's get some, some orcs to, to put on the map. So as with anything else, if you want to start loading it up, you want to go over to the top left. The next one open from your chat window is going to be your art library. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just type the word work and see what it's available for me. Now, as always, you can load in your own um, images, whether it be tokens or top down PNGs. You can load in your own images by not typing anything up there and clicking the upload button. But I'm going to see what's available for me on Roll20 as a free account. And ooh, in doing so, I actually see that there are a bunch of different orcs that are here for me. A bunch of orcs available. There's mages and armored orcs and trolls. And, uh, I thought I said orc. Yeah, whatever. So there's a whole bunch of different options here. And it looks great. But we're trying to summon a thing. And, well, we said shaman. So let's try the word shaman. See if that's an option. Shaman, if I spelled that correctly. And I did. Oh, and the first thing right there is literally an orcish shaman. That's awesome. So I'm going to grab this orc shaman, and we're going to drag and drop him onto the map. Now, I dropped him onto the map already, but one of the things I always want you to be very cognizant of when you're dragging and dropping things onto the map is what layer are you on? Over here, you can see that I am on the objects and tokens layer. If I was on the GM layer, it would be an invisible item. Nobody would be able to see it except for you, the GM. If you're on the maps layer, well, it's not going to be something that you can interact with easily during combat. It's going to be part of the background. And it's going to lose some functionality that a lot of things get when they are on the objects and tokens layer and not drawings. More about drawings later on, but make sure you're on that layer when you bring the guy in. So here we go. Shaman here to do the dirty work. But we don't want one shaman. We want four shamans. So just like with making a map or anything else, I could control C, control V to copy and paste him. But we want him to have more than that there. I mean, there's so many things you can do with this little token. And you can just see it right here all around him when you click on him click on them, all those options appear. Click away, gone, click, hey, look at that. We wanna use some of those assets for ourselves. So why don't we find some attributes to throw on him? Again, you could build this stuff from scratch, but let's be lazy. Over in the top corner, we're gonna go over to our compendium and we're gonna look for something that can help us. Why don't we look for the word shaman and see if there's a shaman that's available. Sadly, there's nothing in the compendium named shaman, but I do know that in the back of the monster manual, there was a druid as an option. So, hey, what the heck? It's a sixth level party. They can handle a few druids, right? I type in druid and voila, there it is. A whole bunch of uh, druids are, are right there for you. So, um, the options that you have here, classes, druid circle, you, you don't want that stuff. You actually want the monster. And just clicking on it and looking at it right here, you can see that this has what it is that you're looking for right there. So druids um, as a monster right there available for you. So we're actually going to grab that. And we're going to drag it out and drop it. And it's going to pop it out right there for you with the traits and everything like we did before. Little warning, make sure that your uh, pop-up blocker is allowing for your 
roll 20 to do this for you. If it does block it, it can cause all sorts of complications like making character sheets go blank. So make sure your pop-up blocker is allowing it to get through. Now, we're going to click on character sheet and we can see, oh, look at that. That's awesome. There is a druid with the stats right there for you. You can make a quick quarterstaff attack. Click over here and look at the um, chat window. And, oh, there is a quarterstaff attack with the damage and everything done for you. That's wonderful. So going back to the top, and you know, as we talked about beforehand, if you drag and drop a monster and you look inside your journal, that monster is now inside your journal, and you can pull that up whenever you want. So here we are with this pulled up item. But we want to be able to apply this to that little token down there. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to drag this over this way. And so I have a little bit more breathing room. I'm actually going to click the edit button right here. And this is going to give me the option of doing a few different things that I couldn't do beforehand. I can actually replace the token. Um, I'll show you what that does in a moment. So right now is a blank token. Nothing would appear on the screen. So I'm going to remove that. Yes, definitely delete that. I'm going to highlight the token I want, which is this little orc shaman, and press use token. And bam, there you go. That's the token I want right there. Now I'm going to change the name from druid to shaman. Oops, if I can spell shaman consistently and incorrectly, that would be wonderful. Press save changes. And now if I ever want to drag and drop shaman onto my screen, it's going to bring a few shamans for me which sounds wonderful, but we're actually not quite there yet. So we're gonna delete these off the screen. The next thing I want to do is highlight this, uh, this little token right here, press the settings wheel, and under here where it says represents character, actually you wanna click this drop down and click shaman. So it actually is representing that character, okay? And moreover, what I wanna do is be able to use those amazing bars that were available on, on the little token, right? So with these wonderful bars now linked to character sheets, I can actually pick one of them, let's say, I don't know, red for health. I click this one right here and it has an awesome drop down bar of all the things that are on that character sheet. So let's just type HP. Hey, that's actually an option. Who would have thought? Almost like I already knew that. So you click HP and it's going to tell you the character has 27 HP. Well, I'm just going to go ahead right here and type 27 out of 27 HP. If you fill in both sides of that, it'll actually make a bar on top of the character. And when we save changes. When you save changes, you can actually see that little bar right there on the character. Allow me to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. That bar is right there. And this is great because now I can do things like if he takes five points of damage, this pops up. You can always see right there. You can hit, hit don't, don't show it again. But you have right there a little window to show you how things, how things work. If I type minus five and then enter, it subtracts five points of health. And you can actually see that bar getting lower. Let's do another 10 points of damage to the guy because the barbarian in the party got a, a, a mediocre hit on him. So minus 10 and, oh man, this guy's hurting. His health points are low. You get the point that I'm getting at here. It allows you to, to keep track of how much health they have easily as a, as a first and run of the game. So I think he actually had 27 at max. Okay, now I'm actually going to go ahead and pop him with Shaman one more time because even though I could have done this quick and clean and one, all at once earlier, I wanted to show you the different steps walking through it. So I'm going to click edit again. I'm actually going to delete this token again because I don't want that. That's just a boring shaman token. Delete, yes. I'm going to highlight this guy again and use that token for save changes. And watch what happens from now on when I drag and drop a shaman. It's going to be a new shaman with the health points already loaded onto it. Now you can use the green and the blue bars for whatever else you want. I don't care about that right now. Right now, we are making four shaman. Look at this. This is awesome. Drag and drop four shaman. I can put onto my map to, to be summoning this, this uh, little elemental thing here. Now, you might be a person like me that's super, super anal about wanting to have things be symmetrical. So you're like, ah, oh, I don't know the way I place that fire thing there. That's really not popping up in a, in a beautiful um, way that I can have all the characters standing perfectly lined up with it. So I want them to be able to do that, but they're snapping to grid. I'm gonna make them a drawing. Right click, advanced options, make it a drawing. Perfect. Now I can literally make it a drawing that stands exactly where I want it to. You think it's a brilliant idea, but as I said before, there are a few flaws when this happens. When you click on this mini now, you notice that there's something different clicking on him versus clicking on the other guy. You click on these other ones, you have that awesome pop-up bar happens, but drawings, they don't get that. They lose that token feature. It's just so important for you to be able to 
make those little adjustments. Sure, you can uh, right click it and uh, sorry, sure you can double click it and it'll pop up this this uh, bar right here. So some, but but this doesn't have the quick grab options. It doesn't allow you to do fun things like say add a token on here that says this guy's dead. Oh, I missed it. This guy's dead. X over him. You can't do that. That's not an option. Even if you double click it, they're not there for you. So just keep in mind, whereas you may be an anal person that wants it to be super symmetrical, you're going to be giving up some great features by doing so. Keep that in mind. All right, there we go. We have our shamans. They're all standing outside this thing, summoning the, the, the beastie. Okay, we know we want a few more orcs. So we're actually going to go back into the compendium. We're going to type the word orc for just our basic, simple, wimpy orcs under monsters. Here's an orc. Drag and drop. Now we have this orc set up over here. We're actually going to just... Um, uh, go over here and press edit because I already know that I'm going to be uh, choosing a token for it. Come back over here. I'm going to type into orc. This is under the R area. Type in orc. I saw a couple of them that I liked. Some basic boring looking orcs. Here we go. Ugly warrior. Looks kind of like an orc. I like it. Mm, yeah, let's go ugly warrior. Drag and drop that ugly warrior. Click him right here. Settings wheel. He's going to represent the new orc that I just made. Uh, this area right here is going to represent his health points. I know his total health points are 15, so I'm just going to press 15, perfect, and save changes. Oop. For some reason, it doesn't want to grab that the first time, but it'll grab it the second time. It's now set up right there. I'm going to remove this token over here, and I'm going to add this orc on. Great. Now I have a wonderfully set up orc that I can just make a ton of if I want to, and I can set them around my battle map. So let's drop back to 50%. We're going to highlight these two, copy, paste, paste, great. We'll have them walking in uh, in tandem guard around this uh, the scene of of the shaman doing what the shaman do. There we go. You guys are uh, over here. You guys can be over here walking. And turn you. And uh, this always, it's kind of funny, whenever I do this kind of stuff, it always reminds me of playing with like G.I. Joes when I was a kid. You know, little action figures over the KCMP. Or Barbies. I actually played with Barbies with my cousin for a while. You know, it's cool. But at least we had some fun. Um, after you get them all set up, again, you can be super anal and make sure that the characters are all perfectly lined up if that's something that you care to do. I personally just like to make sure that they are properly clicked onto the map for you right there. So I want to make sure they're properly clicked onto the map. So... Here we are, we have a, a whole bunch of bad guys sitting on the map with attributes linked to them. And you know what the greatest part about having attributes linked to them? Sometimes when you're on the map, you don't want to come over here and have to click this to open up a character sheet, right? You don't want to do that. One of the things you can actually do is hold on shift and double click the guy and their character sheet pops up for you right there. And then you can make your uh, great axe attack twice because they got attacked twice. You scroll down here, you're going to see your two great axe attacks, what the attack roll was, what the damage was, and everything. And I suppose that is actually going to wrap up how it is you're going to put minis onto a battle map, preparing it for when the PCs come in to ruin those orcs' days. And how it is you're going to link those NPCs' character sheets to the minis so you have all sorts of things available to you, all sorts of um, easy-to-grab attributes. I hope this was helpful in how it is that you go about getting battles started. Um, if you have any questions, once again, always feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or anywhere else. You have all of this stuff in the description blocks below. Thank you guys very much. It was a lot of fun. Bye.